we are doing the um, geometry study guide. I know the said test, but um, that was an error on my part. Sorry. Uh, it was our study guide. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I will have the formulas on the board for all area and volume. Um, so you guys will have access to that during your test. Um, these will be the formulas. And I will put the shape that it will apply to as well, although we need to start learning um, our formulas without uh, knowing what shape it is because on FSA they do not give you a sheet that shows you what shape it is. They will literally just list them just like this on FSA and you will have to know what this um, formula applies to. So start learning that but on your test for tomorrow, uh, sorry, your test for Thursday, um, I will have the shape next to it so that you know what that is. Okay, so number one says an artist using tiles in the shape of a parallelogram. Okay, so it looks like this, to make a mosaic. So a mosaic is like a an artistic design, okay, composed of like a bunch of tiles put together. The tiles have the dimension shown, so 10 inches by 5 inches. What is the area of one tile? So to find the area of a parallelogram, we have to multiply base times height. In this case, our base and our height are 5 and 10, and 5 times 10 is 50, and so it'll be inches squared because uh, area is always squared, so 50 inches squared. Number two says, what is the height of a parallelogram with a base of 7 and an area of 84? So if we have area equals base times height, because that is the formula for the area of a parallelogram, it gave us the area, which is 84, so I have the A, and it gave us the base, which is 7, so I have the B. What I don't have is my H. So 84 is equal to 7 times H. So to find out what my height is, I just have to divide both sides by 7. You guys know how to solve equations now. We did that in the last chapter. So remember, if you have a variable next to a number, that means multiplication. So to solve a multiplication equation, you have to do the opposite of what it says. So the opposite of multiplying by 7 is dividing both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 1 times h is h. So we have h is equal to 84 divided by 7, which is 12. If you know your multiplication facts, that part will be pretty easy. So 12 meters equals the height. Okay. Next we have a triangle. For the area formula of a triangle, it's base times height divided by 2, or you could write um, area equals 1 half base times height. Um, it depends on if you like working it depends on if you like working with fractions or not. Um, I prefer to divide by two in the end, but that's just personal preference. Um, either way, we'll get you the right answer though. So um, we've got three times four, and then we're gonna divide by two. Okay, so three times four gives us 12, and then 12 divided by two gives us six. So remember, this needs to still be in inches squared. We see that it is inches over here, and area is always squared. So area equals 6 inches squared. Um, you could have done it this way. 1 half, 3 times 4, or 4 times 3, either way. Um, and then you could take half of 4, which is 2, and then multiply it by the other thing you have left, which is the 3. So we took half of 4 and then multiplied it by the other number, which is 3, and it still gives us 6. You do not have to do both ways here. Either way will give you the same answer, so you pick whichever way you like best and you do it that way. All right. Um, number 4 says an eraser has the dimensions shown at the right. 
what is the area of the eraser. So this is what we call a trapezoid. How we know it is a trapezoid is because it has only one set of parallel sides. This side is parallel to this side. Remember parallel just means it never touches, okay? They will keep going on straight forever, but they will never cross, okay? That is what parallel means. So we do know it's a trapezoid. The area formula for a trapezoid is base one plus base two times the height divided by two. There is another formula that is like one half the height times base one plus base two. It really means the same thing as this equation. Okay, so we've got our two bases, which is five and eight. It does not matter the order you add them. You could do five plus eight, or you could do eight plus five, either way. Our height is always the number in between the two bases, okay? It may be on the outside. Sometimes they'll do it like this where they'll have a dotted line on the outside of your shape, and then they'll say that the height is six uh, well, centimeters in this case. But um, it's always going to be the number in between your two parallel sides, okay? So our height is six, and then we will divide by two. Okay, so now we have five plus eight. Okay, so, and five plus eight gives us 13. And then we have times six, divide by two. Here's where you can do many different things to get the answer. You can multiply 13 times six, get that answer, and then divide by two. You could take six divided by two and then multiply it times 13. Or you could take 13, divide it by 2, and multiply it times 6. All of those ways will give you the same answer. So whatever way is easiest for you, that's the way you should do it. I can see that we can easily take half of 6 right now. So 6 divided by 2, which gives me 3. And then just do 13 times 3, which I know is 39. If you did not know what that was, you could do 13 times 3 out to the side here. And then that would give you... 39. So we have 39 centimeters squared, and that is our answer. Okay, it says the blueprints for a garden are shown. Each grid on the square is 10 feet. This is very important. So each of these squares is 10 feet. 10 feet this way, 10 feet going up, okay? So I guess it's 10 feet squared. There we go, <laughs> um, 10 by 10. What is the total distance in feet? Okay, around the garden. Around the garden means perimeter around the outside of the garden. So right now I'm just going to count all of the squares around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Okay, so we count to twenty four squares around the entire shape, okay? Then it said each square was 10 feet. So we multiply that times 10, which gives us 240. Anytime you're multiplying any number by 10, you just add a zero to that number, and that is your answer. So 240 feet of distance, okay? so. We have 24 squares times 10 feet, which gives us 240 feet. Okay, number nine, there are a couple of different ways we could get our answer. You could write, um, like graph this shape on a coordinate grid just like this. Okay, or you could say, this has one and one in common. These two, these two ordered pairs have one in common in the um, x coordinate position. And then to get from two to seven, that's five. Okay. 
So then we come over to our next two. I'll cross it off with a different color. Um, these two have seven in common. So to get from one to four, that's three. So one side of this has five, the other side has three, okay? Um, you can continue to do this to figure out what the other two sides are, but it did tell me that it is a rectangle, okay? So we've got a rectangle here. Okay, so one side is three, and then the other side is five. So three, five, three, five, and then we are trying to find the perimeter which means we are adding all of the sides together. Perimeter means to add all of the sides. Okay, so five plus three plus five plus three, five plus five is 10. Three plus three is six, so 10 plus six gives me 16. It did not tell me the units, so it's just the answer is 16. Or you can write 16 units if you'd like, but the answer is just 16, so. Number 10 says, what is the area? Okay, so the area of the figure shown. This is a weird looking figure, okay? It's not one that has a specific um, formula to it, but if you broke it down into two separate shapes, then you could see that we have two rectangles that we are putting together. Okay, if we broke it down into two separate shapes, we could see that there are two rectangles here. Okay, and I do know that rectangles have a uh, formula of base times height, okay? So if we have two of them, okay? The bottom rectangle, we have a base of 12 and a height of three. So area equals 12 times three. And then the top one has a base of three and a height of one. So three times one. 12 times three gives me 36. Three times one gives me three, and then you just add those together because this is one big shape all together. This is your bottom rectangle and this is your top rectangle, but we want to know the entire shape, which means we need to add all of this together. Okay, so we're going to add 36 plus 3, which gives us 39. Hey, 39, another answer. So 39 feet squared because we are talking about area here. So our answer for area is always squared. Okay, number 11 is asking for the surface area. You guys saw it um, when I was teaching it, uh, right side up like this. This is how I taught um, surface area of rectangular prisms. It looked something like this. I know that was a little sloppy, but uh, it was a cross just like this. Four rectangles down the middle and one on either side. Notice that we have a six, a two, and a nine. Okay, so six, two, nine. Remember, it does not matter the order that you put your numbers in on the stairs. Okay, so then we have, we multiply the two numbers together to get the number in the middle. So nine times two gives me 18. Six times two gives me 12. And 9 times 6 gives me 54. And then you alternate. 12, 54, 12, 18, 54, 18, 54. And then however you like to add all six of those numbers together, um, that's how I'd like you to do it. So 18 plus 18, 54 plus 54, and 12 plus 12. Okay, I know 12 plus 12 gives me 24. Eight, uh, 4 plus 4 gives me 8, and then 5 plus 5 gives me 100. 5 plus 5 gives me 10, so we have 108. We have 16 here. Oops, carry the 1, so we have 36. So then I'm adding together 36, 108, and 24. Or however best you would like to add those three numbers together. You could add two of them and then add it to the third one. Um, Whichever way you'd like to do it is fine by me. So uh, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus another 4 is 18. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 is 6. And then we have our 1 here. So our answer is 168, or 168 yards squared. Again, this is surface area, and area is always squared. Okay, my next one is that... Um, what is the volume of a rectangular prism? 
Remember the volume formula for a rectangular prism is base times width times height or length times width times height. It means the same thing. Okay? Sorry, anybody want some American Eagle? Okay, um, volume equals base times width times height. Our base width and height, they're all decimals here, but we have 8 and 2 tenths times 9 and 4 tenths times 10 and 7 tenths. Okay, so you just multiply two together at a time. So I'm going to get a blank sheet of paper so I have a little bit more room to multiply. Okay, so we have 10 and 7 tenths times 9 and 4 tenths. So 7 times 4 gives me 28. I carry the 2. 4 times 0 is 0 plus 2 is 2. And 4 times 1 is 4. We have a 0 to hold my place value. 9 times 7 gives me 63. Carry the 6. 9 times 0 is 0 plus 6 is 6. And 9 times 1 is 9. We have 8, 5, 10, and 10. 4 plus 6 is 10, carry the 1, and 1 plus 9 is 10. We have two decimal places here. <laughs> Sorry. Two decimal places. 1, 2. So we start at the back and move it over 1, 2. We are not done yet. We still have to multiply this number times our last um, dimension, so which is 8 and 2 tenths. Again, it did not have to be in that order that we multiplied in. You could have multiplied the other two together and multiplied that by your third. Um, whichever two numbers you wanted to start with is fine. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11, carry the 1. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 1 is 2. We put a 0 to hold our place value here. And then 8 times 8 is 64, carry the 6. Oops. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 6 is 46, carry the 4. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. 8 times 0 is 0, and 8 times 1 is 8. And then we add these together. 1 plus 4 is 5, 1 plus 6 is 7, 0 plus 4 is 4, 2 plus 0 is 2, and then we have our 8 here. We are counting our decimal places. We have one, two, three numbers behind our decimal. So we start at the back and move our decimal over one, two, and three times. Okay, so we moved our decimal over three times, and so our answer is 824 and 756 thousandths. And it is in make sure I got that number right. It is in, it is going to be cubed. Our answer is going to be feet cubed. Our answer is going to be feet cubed. Um, now, if our answer said to round to the nearest tenths place, we could, but this is our full answer. Okay, and then our last question says a storage con container is in the shape of a rectangular prism. The container has a has a length of 5 feet, a width of 9 feet, and a height of 8 feet. What is the surface area of the container? Remember, surface area, we are drawing the cross. We are drawing four rectangles in the middle, and then two rectangles on either side. All right, we have 5, 9, and 8. Again, whatever order you wanted to do that in is fine. 8 times 9 is 72. 9 times 5 is 45, and 8 times 5 is 40. Again, we are alternating 45, 40, 45, 72, 40, 72, and 40. And then you are just adding all those numbers together, so 40 and 40, 72 and 72, and 45 and 45. Uh, 45 and 45 makes 90, 72 and 72. We've got 4 here and 14, so 144. And then um, 40 plus 40 gives us 80. 70 and 40 gives me 170. And then we are adding that to 144. 11, so 314. And this will be feet 
squared because it is talking about feet and we are talking about surface area. Remember, area is always going to be squared. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure you study and I will see you tomorrow.